Okay, good morning everybody, or afternoon, evening, wherever you are. My name is Plywood. I have been running Metal Gear Solid for over four years now, and this is going to be a general route tutorial for all bosses PC easy. Now, something I have to say right off the bat, um, as we go further into the run, there are certain things that I'm going to gloss over, and that's because I already have video tutorials about certain things. So if you're like, why is he not talking long about Liquid? That's why, because you should go watch my tutorial on that, it's well edited, etc. This video is for general routing purposes, so you have a good idea of how all bosses PC Easy works. Um, there's still more to come when it comes to tutorials in this game, but this is just a good starting point. Um, before you even start the game, there's a lot you have to do with the PC version. So, there's three distinct versions of the PC port, the Windows 2000 port. Um, there's the CD-ROM release, like the physical CD-ROM. There's the Oxide NL patch, or the Reddit patch. And then the most recent release of this PC port was on GOG, goodoldgames.com. Uh, that's the version I'll be using today. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, there are some quirks to all of them, but they're all comparable. I personally use the GOG version because um, there's some nice little quality of life improvements for this port. Um, for instance, you can be, be in software rendering mode and windowed mode. Um, but you can play on the Reddit patch. It's not that big of a deal. But what I would suggest, uh, and you can find this on the resources on the leaderboard, is to use B-Man's Launcher which lets you set the core affinity of your processor, which is very important. Um, you can set up your saves appropriately through there. There's a bunch of pre-baked saves that you can use, which is really helpful. Um, so, like, doing that is a good idea. Because B-Man has really made um, this game easier to play with his launcher and his auto splitter. Now you might be wondering what the heck I'm talking about with core affinity, like what's core affinity? Um, there is an issue with the PC version that's been known about for years where if you hold X to skip multiple cutscenes in a row, the game loads so fast on modern hardware that the game can just crash. Um, well, really it's like a soft lock. You'll keep on hearing the same dialogue over and over again, you won't advance. Um, depending on your processor, you need to play on a certain number of cores, and that varies from processor to processor. Some processors, you literally don't have to do anything with Affinity. Uh, others, it's very important you do so, otherwise you could softlock when skipping multiple cutscenes in a row, or when you do a certain little cutscene skip later on in the game, it could crash there as well. So, that's something to know going into it. Um, there is some... this. PC version is pretty broken um, when you actually get into the run itself, and also the port, uh, you can have issues with it, so just be aware of that going in. As far as options are concerned, um, I would hi highly suggest adjusting your keyboard options. This is how I do it. Uh, I used to have my keys over on the left side of the keyboard, so that would be ASDF, QWER if you're um, using an English keyboard. I moved it over to the right side, and that is going to be important later on for God Mode exploit, just to keep your fingers all close together. Um, so I do YUIO for my menu stuff, HJKL for the face buttons if you were looking at like a PlayStation controller, those face buttons. And then Escape is your menu. You can also skip cutscenes that way. Tab is radio. That's really up to you, personal preference. And then I use the arrow keys to move. Um, you could like move with ASDF if you want. That's that's really up to you. But I move with my right hand. Uh, this option right here is very important. Uh, it's gonna appear blank. It's just a weird glitch of having window and software mode on, but. You can adjust your music volume, which is nice if you want to tr put the music down a little bit. Uh, the music isn't that important, but you can use it for audio cues. But the video options are very important. You have two options. 
You have hardware rendering, which uses your graphics card, and then there's software rendering. You want to use software rendering. Okay, let me repeat that. You want to use software rendering because the game literally loads faster in software rendering mode. In all bosses, you're probably saving about a minute with software rendering mode. I'm not even kidding, which is a lot, a lot. On any percent, you save like about 30 seconds. It's probably around double on all bosses. It's not like I haven't done the math on it, but it's a lot of time. So make sure to change the software rendering mode. Now, if you're using the Oxide NL Reddit patch, you cannot be in windowed mode while in software mode because you'll get this weird fuchsia nightmare color scheme that looks terrible. So you'll have to play in full screen on the Oxide patch. On the GOG version, um, that issue is fixed. So that's something to consider. Um, the GOG version is like five or ten bucks. So you know, if you want to buy this game, I would suggest going to GOG.com. So that, that, that's, that's the important stuff out of the way. Make sure to adjust your keys accordingly. I use a PlayStation Classic controller, by the way, for playing this game. Yes, like the PlayStation Classic, the mini console, uh, it works really well. Um, since we don't actually have analog, it doesn't matter. And the PlayStation Classic pad has no analog stick. Uh, you can use like a DS4 and some other controllers, but your mileage may vary. There are controller profiles specifically for the DualShock 4. Um, so there's that. I actually do use the DualShock 4 during this run, but that's specifically for Mantis, and we'll get into that later. Okay, so let's actually get into the run proper. So time starts when you select difficulty. We're going to be doing easy, which is the difficulty that I suggest everyone start running this game with. Very easy is basically the same as easy, um, except on PC where there's a bunch of things that additional tricks and glitches that you can only do on very easy that you can't do on easy. Um, but for simplicity's sake and uh, general competitiveness, easy is the most popular category and the one we're going to cover. There are differences, but we are not going to talk about them today. We're only going to talk about easy. However, a lot of it can transfer over. It's not like you can't learn from an easy tutorial. It's just that certain things will change. With that being said, let's begin. I'm holding X to skip the cutscenes as soon as possible, and then pressing Start or Escape to skip the codec. Really nice benefit of this port is that you can skip codecs immediately and the loads are really fast, so no mashing like on console. Uh, one control thing I want to mention, uh, there is a full control tutorial that I have on my YouTube, so I'm not going to go in, in depth about controls and stuff. Um, so again, use the resources I've already made. I'm not going to go over the same stuff again. But um, F3 on the keyboard is pause. This is very important. F3, this is like the in-game time pause. Because this doesn't actually pause the game, this little menu that pops out. But if you press F3, this is like the pause in the original console version. And this pauses the in-game time. You can use F3 to skip certain cutscenes, but not all of them. It's kind of strange. And you could use this specifically for Mantis, before Mantis, so you could set up your other controller profile if you're using like DualShock 4 or whatever. So that's something to consider. Um, I use F3 for certain things in the run, like skipping multiple cutscenes in a row and setting myself up to do certain things, but it's not super important, but something to keep in mind. Um, if you set up your DS4 controller a certain way, you can have F3 actually be your pause button, like on start, which is what I have right now. So that's nice. Anyways. The dock. So, historically, everyone would be stealthy here, but you don't actually want to be stealthy. We want to actually... Cause alerts. I wanted to kill this other guard, but that's fine. 
Um, we're going to be farming alerts in the dock. And the reason for that is because later on in the game, there is a piece of RNG that becomes better if you farm alerts here. You want to get like five alerts, but you can get by with four. It's totally fine. Anytime you hear the siren, you will get an alert, but you don't want an alert until the last one clears. So you basically just kind of run, run around the rosy with this guy for the next few minutes. So I like knock at like 20-ish, bring him over, wait until the alert clears, rinse, repeat. It's pretty simple. On easy, their vision is pretty poor, so you can exploit that here. Um, you want to do this strat on every difficulty as long as you're not going for rank 1. When you see that Jeremy Blaustein credit, you should be done. You should finish farming alerts. There's a ration over here that's easy to pick up. That's the only one you really need to pick up. And you really don't need it, but, you know, it's over there, so you should pick it up. That Yoshikazu credit is the last one you'll see. So at that point, you really need to be done and sitting over here. So right here, you want to knock, and this will bring the guard down early, and then just pass by him like that. Do not crouch, because there's a loading trigger here, and you want to cross that loading trigger while standing. If you're crouched or prone, it'll take a little bit longer. It's so this line depends on difficulty. I'd say the easy line is the easiest. Um, very important to note here, and this is going to be important throughout this entire run, is using weapon hotkeys. Um, there are certain reasons why you would actually use your weapons like this, like ho holding up the... Uh, weapon menu, but generally speaking, 95-99% of the time you'll never do that. You will use your weapon hotkeys on your keyboard. And further, further along that line, you want to be using keyboard, generally speaking, if you have to do god mode exploit, etc. And the reason being um, is that if you have to like move your hands a lot, you're going to be losing time by initiating certain glitches and stuff. So just be aware that if you're if you're just like running around like this, I'm about to go pick up the chaff, like just having your other hand on the 9 key, which is chaff, uh, that's a good thing. But sometimes you'll want to actually use the keyboard. This is something that kind of terrifies people who are used to the console version. But trust me, like this game is pretty basic at the end of the day like you can get used to playing on keyboard um unless you've run a lot of console then it, it, it definitely will take some getting used to but trust me it's it's not as bad as you think it is especially since we do not have 360 analog so it's just eight way movement so you cross over and then you're going to cross this chaff press nine and then you're going to run up this little strip this guy's going to shoot Hopefully you don't get shot like I did, because the movement was a little bit off. And you do a quick throw, which you do by unequipping your weapon, pressing square to throw, and then re-equipping your weapon, and you'll cancel the animation. So up here, we have to use a visual cue to know when to press select. When the rat on the left starts moving, you're going to press select to uh, listen to the Miller call. So if you took a lot of damage, uh, it's a good idea to equip your ration at some point. Uh, I would suggest doing it in the cell when you actually get there, just in case. Here you just crawl in the vent, it's very simple. Nothing, nothing too extraordinary here. When we get out of the, the, the vent, we are not going to cook the chaff immediately. Do not cook the chaff immediately because sometimes the wrong guard can hear it. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to delay about a second-ish and then start cooking the chaff. 
and then I will throw the chaff at the box. So it'll look something like this. Like that. If you cook the chaff immediately, the wrong guard can hear it, and that will screw up the strategy, so don't do that. Just delay a little moment and throw at the box by holding left while you move towards the box past the tank. Okay, so we're going to take the ladder. This is not any percent. want to be as close to the ladder as possible to climb it. Otherwise, you'll punch the air. It's not good. And once again, we're going to crawl through some vents. Now, coming up, there is a sequence where you're supposed to press triangle to interact with uh, the vent to start the cutscene. But you can actually mash circle. Uh, which is something I learned recently. So just start mashing circle here once you start approaching this vent and you'll go straight into it. Hold X to skip the cutscenes and boom, you're here. So there is a ration under this bed. You might as well pick it up. If you were good with your HP, um, you shouldn't have to equip the ration, but just equip the ration. Hold down left at this little corner and Snake will do this, like, repeated animation. And this will let you get through the door as quickly as possible once it opens. Okay, so the cell fight, the guard encounter, whatever you want to call it. So this first wave, it's all on us. And really, generally speaking, we should kill the guard, all the guards ourselves. But this first wave is definitely just on us. So... You're going to pick up the SOCOM, and you're going to stand over on the left edge, kind of kind of by where the SOCOM ammo box is, and just sort of pow, pow, pow all the guards. They have the least amount of HP on easy, so we can waste some ammo and be okay, but try not to waste too many bullets if you can help it. So you run to the SOCOM, then to the ammo, and just spam your gun by mashing square. This cutscene will play. It's unskippable. And then we're going to go into the corner. Over here by the door. And just wait until you see them come into the room and then start bashing square. Pick up the ammo. Rinse, repeat. They take three shots each on easy. And we, as you can see, I'm, I'm being... I'm not trying to waste ammo, because I know it's just three shots each. And see, I have a ton of ammo at this point. Always try to aim at the door. So if you have to adjust your aim, like, fine. Just make sure you're aiming at the door itself. I menu to the SOCOM, but that's just because of muscle memory. Uh, SOCOM is hotkey one, so that's really what you want to do there, is you want to use hotkey one. Probably use do the whole first portion, first wave of guards on keyboard um, just to save a little bit of time on the menu. But it's a small menu. It's not that big of a deal. So when you're done with the cell fight, you want to hold up. Just hold up and you will go straight to the elevator panel. Don't, don't squirrel around. All you have to do is hold up. And just press circle once you approach the panel. Sometimes the elevator will show up fast. Um, you'll hear it drop after the first press. Then you should just go for the inside of the elevator. And you saved a couple seconds. But usually that doesn't happen. So we're about to fight uh, Ocelot. We want to go in here and pick up C4 which is on key seven, yep, it's key seven. Uh, if you're low on ammo and you're a little bit, like let's say you have like zero shots of SOCOM, you can come in here and pick up ammo, but all you need is like a couple of bullets to start the Ocelot fight. Then you're gonna go in here and pick up these grenade packs. You can pick up three grenade packs after Ocelot, um, but you could also do it now. Um, it depends on how well you can do the tank. But generally speaking, I'll say people should pick it up after the fight. 
but it's a little bit a little bit faster to do it first. So you want to equip your C4, approach the wall like this, and have rations out because we're going to blow ourselves through the wall. You don't have to do this, but it saves a couple of seconds by blowing yourself through the wall rather than moving out of the way. So we're going to do that for this one as well. Uh, right there I did a C4 animation cancel. If you're wondering what that is, go watch my weapons tutorial. And here, you just need to drop one C4 um, since we don't have to worry about this clogging our inventory since we have weapon hotkeys. It doesn't matter. On console, you would want to drop both C4 at this point um, just so they're not clogging your inventory. But we can just switch to SOCOM here not worry about it. So we're going to go over SOCOM Ocelot. If you, you might be like, what about Grenade Ocelot? Don't do Grenade Ocelot. Do not do Grenade Ocelot. You are, you are learning the game. Saving the 8 seconds or whatever from Grenade Ocelot is not worth it if you don't know the run. Um, it's way too risky. So we are going to be doing SOCOM Ocelot, which is what every beginner should do. So what's going to happen here? I'm going to blow myself through the wall, and I'm going to hold square and X. X is to skip the cutscene with Baker, and Square is going to let us immediately start aiming the SOCOM from our starting position, and Snake will auto-aim to Ocelot. Okay? So it's hold Square and X. See, I got... A, it's, it's just an auto-aim shot. You don't need to do anything fancy there. Just Square and X, and you'll let go of Square and fire. So I missed there. Um... It's because I'm pausing. That's that's my excuse. But basically, you want to rotate around the pillar immediately. You'll go, like, down the middle and fire at Ocelot. And we're going to initiate a loop with Ocelot. So, boom. I didn't put my rations on. That's actually a good teaching moment, though, because that is a very common issue that people will have when they're running... Not just this game, but other Metal Gear games, they'll forget to have their rations out when they need them. So just, if you're not sure if you're going to die or what, just have your rations out. Even if it adds more menuing, who cares? Like, all you have to do is tap left to equip your card, usually. So, like, if you have to do it, just do it. Just a good, good life lesson in running Metal Gear is have your rations out, your life meds, whatever. So yeah, you want to hold square next. You want to hug the pillar and fire at at Ocelot. You can also wait. I'll show that here. It's probably a little bit easier because of the timing. You can wait, draw. Hiding won't help you. And then he's stuck in place. So you do circles like this. Once he turns away, his iframes are done. I will show something that you don't want to screw up. I don't know if he's gonna... Yeah, there we go. So, let's say you're trying to loop him uh, when he's out of ammo. It's not gonna work, because the only way the counterattack works is if he still has a bullet. If he has no bullets, he's gonna run away. So, don't keep on doing circles if he's out of ammo. Pay attention to the ammo count at the top. Now, ideally on easy, he should never go and reload. Because his HP is so low that it shouldn't happen. So, that shouldn't be a problem. There we go. Just keep on moving. That's The first part of the fight is really the hardest part. Just keep on making circles. When the fight ends, you can pick up that ammo. How can I remember to use a ration? You just have to remember. I don't you just if you're about to fight a boss fight, it's just a good idea to have the rations out. Alright, so you'll pick up more SOCOM ammo as you exit when you go down. We have to go through the hole unlike in twin snakes. Now you can go pick up your grenades. All three three packs. Let's pretend I just picked up three packs. This save uh, doesn't have picked up the grenades beforehand. 
So, so you're gonna throw that guard if you go that way um, and pick up the grenades. If you don't pick up, if you pick up the grenades first, then you would go up the first column and then throw the guard as you go diagonal to the right. Okay, so uh, the radar is really useful here to guide yourself. We're about to do the vent glitch. This is like the most important vent glitch in the whole run. The other one really isn't as important. But you see this like, there's a circle, a big circle where the tank used to be. Right here, that's where the vent is. To set it up easily, go against the wall. Crawl in about halfway like this. Then you're gonna hold up, uh, FPV up. And then you're gonna let go of both. And after you let go of pro both, you press X. Okay, so you look up at the ceiling, let go of both, and then press X. And then you're going to stand on top of the vent. You have to curve around. If you just hold up, there's a wall here. So you need to curve around like this. On the radar, you can see. And you can't just, like, immediately hold... Well, maybe you can. If you, if you cut the, the turn too tight, you may not hit the door... Um, so this room before, uh, the tank, you want to be safe, you go left, go like this, and you'll lose a little bit of time. Um, if you're confident in your movement, you will hold up left like that and go along this track. Um, since we're talking about diagonals, I want to mention this now. Be very careful about diagonals in this game. There is a known issue when you hold... If you press both like a, both directions at the same time to go in a diagonal, sometimes Snake will start continuing to move in that direction after you let go. So let me see if I can do it. Yeah, I let go and he kept on walking. So it's very annoying because that can cause you to lose time or go into a position you don't want to go into. It's very bad. So the way you counteract that is the way you do diagonals on the PC version is you hold a direction and then you add the next one. And then that issue will not happen. So up then left to do up left, not up left at the same time. So that's just something really important to note since we're right here at a diagonal moment in the run. So up then left. That's almost too much to the left. Again, you want to be basically in the middle of this track. There's a claymore like over there, and then there's a claymore over there. So, but if you want to be safe, just go like this. Boom. Okay. So the tank fight on PC it's a little bit different than console, but it's essentially the same. It's just that the very start of the movement can be a little bit more risky. I'll try to show the safer way after the riskier way. So you hold up, right, X and square. If your movement's bad, you're going to get blown up here. Um, the frame rate on PC is way more strict with this movement compared to console. So... As you can see, I got blown up and you get a unskippable cutscene and it's a mess. So don't do that. You want to basically go upright at this track. You see this like line in the snow where this track is? And that's where you want to go upright. But if you're not comf comfortable in that, you can do this. This is what D-Limes does. He crouches and then it hits the, hits the hill. Uh, that's what I would suggest for everyone to do on PC to start. Um, if you're really confident in your movement, you can just keep on moving, but the slight time loss of crouching means you're not gonna lose like seven, 10 seconds. So that's just uh, something to keep in mind. So hold upright, square, and X right here. Crouch, and then you're gonna equip your grenades. There is a cook point and a throw point. Um, you can see a video of it on my YouTube as well um, with the more advanced strat where you pick up some more stuff. But there is a cook point and a throw point. 
Um, you just have to know exactly when to cook, when to throw, and how to move. There, that's really all there is to it. I think I wasn't close enough. Which is okay, probably. There we go. So right here where the... There's like two wheels. There's two wheels right here. You're going to go up left. Like that. And you're going to throw the grenade. Except I messed up. I think it's because of the timing being a little bit different. That crouch strat, you have to be far enough forward to actually make it work. Yeah, good good point. Yeah, uh, just in case you don't know, again, you should watch my general tutorials before you watch this. So spend the time to watch those. But yeah, if you run with a weapon equipped, you move faster. So you should always have a weapon equipped. But instead, we're just going to go boom like that. Much easier. I don't know why he did that. It's really annoying. Important to note that depending on how long you cook the grenade on the tank, uh, Snake could throw it further, which is really annoying. Like, he will throw the grenade. If you cook the grenade and throw it at, at literally the last fraction of a second, he will, like, throw it and it will go into the moon. Like, it goes super far. They made the grenade mechanics different on tank, where if you threw it super, super late... Stink will throw it like he's like a football quarterback. So um, just be aware of that. Like the timing of your cook and throw are really, really important for the tank. Really important. Um, and your positioning and everything. So it's just something you have to put in the practice for. And you will realize that it's actually the easiest fight in the game. But if you don't know what you're doing, it becomes the hardest fight in the game. That is the duality of the tank. It's either the easiest fight or the hardest fight. So I'm going to do a movement here that's going to make my movement completely consistent and avoid getting spotted by a guard. So I'm going to equip my chaff, up left at the shadow. Again, there's a full YouTube tutorial on this strat. You're going to get this codec, skip it, hear about the letter B, hold up left. And then you're going to run along this top wall, pick up the chaff, run along this wall. And then this guard is going to turn away. Quick throw him. If you want to be safe, you can just stalk him the whole way to the elevator. But ideally, you throw him. Luckily for you, that's the one time you'll be doing that strat. So, so here, we're going to go down. Um, you don't need all the Nikita ammo. You can just get by with picking up just the Nikita launcher. There are stun grenades over there. You do not need them on PC. You really don't. Don't worry about it. All you need is the Nikita. If you don't keep up on your grenade routing, then you might want to pick up the Nikita ammo. It's not that big of a time loss. Number four is for Nikita. Go through the doors. Hold X to skip the cutscene. So, you'll watch the doors on the right. So, one door, two door, three door. After the third door, you're going to turn left. Do this all in third person. Up left here. Try to get it through the door. And then you're going to swap right there you can let it land on the wall but you can explode it a little bit earlier by just equipping your next weapon now you do not need this but on pc the time loss is really minimal because we don't have to use the weapon menu um this is where you pick up the famas if you want to use it specifically for raven uh not raven uh mantis so we go in here and pick up the famas that's on weapon hotkey 2 um, like I said, you do not need the FAMAS, um, but you it's like two seconds out of the way. So um, it may be helpful for you for Mantis. Just want to throw that out there. Try to hug this wall as much as possible. Sometimes this turret could shoot you if you're not careful. Hold right. 
go straight into that little cutscene blip. Hold X. If you pick up the FAMAS, that ammo will be there, so pick up that ammo. It's free FAMAS ammo, essentially. Just a little bit out of the way. Even so, you want to be over on this right side because Snake moves forward from that point. So you want to, like, wiggle like this. Boom. And then you're going to go to this door. You don't actually need the card out, so if you wanted to equip your ration here, you can. Uh, Ninja Sting, I didn't fix the music stuff, so we're just doing a tutorial. Nothing fancy. Okay, so Ninja. There's multiple phases to this fight. We're going to run up on him right now and punch, punch, kick. Um, a neat thing that you can do is do a kick cancel. So you punch, punch, kick, and then once the kick flies out, you cancel it with pressing X. Um, you don't really need to worry about that, but it helps a little bit just for control purposes. So approach him, PPK. He's going to jump in some random direction and then run to the right. Unequip your weapon. Unequip your weapon because if he sees you without a weapon equipped, he could run away. So just keep a weapon unequipped. That way he keeps on fighting you. At this point, you could equip your SOCOM just to, um, you could keep your SOCOM equipped at this point just so you can move a little bit faster. Um, the whole thing with this fight is just knowing when you have the opportunity to actually PPK. So you can PPK him when he's like attacking you, after he lands, that sort of thing. And just keep on following him. When he does that attack, run out of the way and then approach to PPK, like that. You want to do all PPKs. We don't want to miss. If you get that attack and you're too far away, just like wait for the attack to finish, then um, attack when he's done. Um, you might be noticing that I'm messing up a little bit. I'm like PPKing too early. Again, just be a bit patient. Patience is the key here. You just have to know when your pocket is to attack and you'll be fine. We want to do all PPKs because of how the damage values work later on in the fight. So this is hide and seek. Uh, he can drop in multiple places. Keep a weapon equipped so you can run faster here. You can look in first person to see where he drops or you could listen in on the audio to see where he drops as well. So that's good luck. Um, generally speaking, I try to stand in this area, um, if I can help myself, I can stand in this area and then I can go in any direction. Otherwise, uh, you will stand central to the left and right area of the room. I'll show that later. So this is the one punch phase. Approach him and try to face him in PPK. Let him teleport, punch, PPK, stand on him, he will teleport, punch, PPK. There is a more advanced strat, but this is what you should start with. So, boom. So, this dialogue right here, if you did your damage values correctly, this shouldn't happen. But I messed up in phase two. So, try to not have that happen. I'll do the fight one more time. Pick up those chaff. While he's screaming, stand over here, shoot. Stand over here, shoot. And then shoot through this window right now. I'm going to do the fight one more time. Just so uh, everyone can get a sense of what's going on. Hopefully this time I don't miss my PPKs. I can also uh, show where I stand roughly during hide and seek. I stand over here. He's going to start kicking me. That's fine. He can go here. I'm going to chaff him so he can stop kicking me. Leave me alone, dude. Don't use chaff, by the way. It's 
it wastes too much time. Uh, he'll be over here. He could be over here. He can be over here. He can be over here. Here. And down here. So those are the points where he teleports to. So if I want to be centralized in each area, I stand here. Or I stand about here. Or I stand in the middle room like right here. Don't stand where he teleports to because if he lands on top of you, he will jump immediately away. So don't ever stand on top of where he lands. That's very bad because then you're still playing hide and seek. I want to mention this now. This is kind of separate from the tutorial, but theoretically, theoretically, uh, we could um, take him out before hide and seek, but I don't know how to do that yet. It's somewhat similar to what we used to do in Twin Snakes, but I, I don't know how exactly to make it work. But theoretically, you could take him out in phase two and skip um, the extra dialogue and um, the hide and seek phase and all that. Again, just like the other boss fights, it really comes down to practice. This fight really isn't that bad uh, on its on a basic level. It's just be patient and, and make sure to land your attacks. That's really what it comes down to. So I'll go up left. PPK. Try to always like directly face him when you're comboing. You don't want to like be at a weird angle. Sometimes Snake will do like he will do this auto aim attack where sometimes one of the attacks will miss. So always try to square yourself with the ninja. It's really annoying. It's really, really annoying when you miss a attack. Because on easy, you want to be able to skip that long piece of dialogue near the end. There's some ammo right there, so you could pick that up if you get thrown over there with him. You can unequip your SOCOM late as well here. You don't want him to see that you have a gun equipped. Now you can have it equipped if you want. See, I attacked him before he initiated. It's all about knowing your distance and the timing. Let's let him do that drop kick. Your kick has pretty good range, so exploit it. If your punch can land, your kick should land as well. So that's that's a bad spawn for where I'm standing right now. See, it's pretty far down here, that spawn. It's one of the worst. Again, listen in on the audio or look in FPV. So he's on my right. Uh, that was unfortunate. This is exactly what I said about whiffing. I could show you the other strat right here, but it's not one I recommend. You want to be two tile lengths away and try to combo. So you can like perfectly attack him when he stands up like that. But it's bad to mess it up. It's pretty easy in this narrow corridor, of course. But if your positioning's bad... <coughs> if your positioning's bad, you'll miss. You run faster with a weapon equipped. Boom. Rotate around. If he has one sliver of HP left, that's fine. Like, it'll work. If you want, you can break this glass and, like, get that ration as well. Worth mentioning. You know, if you do the basic strat, this this fight really isn't that complicated. Um, but the fight can become more complicated as you get more comfortable with the run. Um, if you were to do my advanced tank strat, you would actually pick up the chaff now, not beforehand. But if you just do the basic tank strat, like you want to pick up the chaff 
uh, when he's screaming at the end. So that's just something worth mentioning. So here, you just want to turn the corner tightly. You can walk on this guy's legs. Just run on them. It's okay, you can be disrespectful to the body. It's a little bit faster than running around it. And here, we now have level 4 cards, so we can open this door. You pick up that package of stun grenades, and that's it. Uh, you really don't need the other package on PC. The only reason why you do that is if you're doing Pazzo's uh, nuke building strat both times, but you really only need that package of stuns, seriously. But you have to pick those up. Like, that's a requirement for the route. You can't ignore them, otherwise you're going to lose a lot of time on Mantis coming up. So, I'm going to show two different strats here. Uh, one is the one I suggest you to learn if you're just starting out. So you're going to come to this come to this area and then hold square and X and shoot the gun and that's going to force Meryl to look at you. Yes, f frames are dropping. So like as you can see he or she rather uh sees me early. Um if you are doing the box strat, you would run into review and pick up the box. Now you would save a little bit of time by doing the box strat, I'm pretty sure, but it's very small and it's only for the first time through, so just be aware of that. But generally speaking, just fire your gun as you approach this door because learning the box out of bounds in the cave isn't really that important. So like that. Then she'll go towards this bathroom. You follow her. Don't move. And you'll turn tightly around the uh around the bathroom and go straight into the stall. We're gonna have some unskippable cutscenes, unfortunately. Just hold down. Go straight out the, the elevator or elevator. Bathroom door. I'll keep a lookout. Bathroom elevators, that's okay? that's Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, which this game's based off of. Here, come take the women's bathroom elevator. You're already ready. You should not go down there. You have everything you need, so don't start wandering around. You're going to turn the corner and go straight for Mantis. You're going to hold up again. You're going to get a cutscene here. You want to equip your stuns at some point. Worthwhile mentioning you can menu even during those little cutscenes there on PC. Like, you can just do weapons at basically any time. Whenever you see Snake, like, and it's not a cutscene cutscene, you can menu. So, make sure to do that. You need stuns for this next part. You're going to run into the room about right there and stop. And then you're going to get to this next tile and stop. And then Meryl is going to get possessed, and which is fine. She won't move. If you move too far into the room, she'll run forward, and that loses time because then she has to run back. Right there, I hold right square and X, and then I throw my uh, stun grenade immediately because we want to stun her as soon as possible. It's the fastest way to take her out here. Um, at this point, if you have a second controller, you want to switch to that and get your SOCOM or FAMAS out. So, Mantis on PC is a little bit different. Because for some reason, uh, I think it's because there is no Hideo on PC. He starts at the, he starts right above you. Um, on console, he actually does start right above you, but he moves over to the top right. Um, on PC, he starts literally right in front of you, so just take a pot shot. This fight is a very good place to use FPV aiming. Um, if you double tap triangle on PC, you can aim in FPV. Uh, that in combination with the FAMAS can make things a lot simpler for you. 
Uh, but if you're from console like me, like you run a lot of consoles, you don't have that, and you can still do the fight well in third person. But I'm just saying that that's an option for you. So after you shoot him, you're going to hold triangle and see where he teleports. You don't really need to move from this position at all. So just hold triangle and see where he moves. So you move to left. So then I hold triangle again. He's down right. Like that. So you just see where he's moving. Um, the only one where you might want to move a little bit is if he goes top left. If he goes top left, then you're probably going to want to move a little bit. But basically every other position, you don't have to move. You just have to rotate in place. So you just hold square and turn uh, if you're using a controller. Now, worthwhile mentioning that I am using a DS4 Windows profile so that my controller, my secondary controller, acts as a keyboard. Um, naturally, you're supposed to do this fight on keyboard. That is basically controller port 2. So if you don't have a second controller, or you can't set up a, a secondary profile which uses the keyboard keys. Instead, you'll have to use keyboard for this fight. Now, the good news is, is that this fight really isn't that long on easy. And trust me, like I said earlier, even though it's awkward at first, you can get used to playing this, this fight on keyboard. It just takes practice. This fight, in actuality, is one of the trickiest fights in the game because uh, it requires a lot of you in terms of your aiming and there is some RNG factors at play later on. So just be aware of that. It's a tricky fight. So after you shoot him three times, he's gonna go into the middle. I'm gonna move over to, you see that carpet corner? I'm gonna move over to that carpet corner right now. It's so like right there, and I'm gonna turn and start shooting him. We need to do four more shots, and then I'm gonna throw a grenade at him and that's gonna cause a phase skip to happen where Meryl does not shoot at us. So one, two, three, rotate a little bit down to shoot him. So just kind of track him as he floats down and then you're gonna equip the grenades now, cook them. We wanna throw the grenade dead center on him. If you take some damage, it's fine. You're gonna get health back in a moment. You're gonna stand up, so like wiggle your D-pad. Marrow will fall over and you'll stand up. Keep your grenades out, because that's the next thing you're gonna do, is throw another grenade. So at this point, all you have to do is throw Meryl. So just approach Meryl and throw her. My controls got weird there for some reason. So you just throw her, and she'll get knocked out. Hold triangle, see where he goes. At this point, you're going to throw a grenade at him again. This is better than um, doing the fight normally. Now, what what's going to pop up on your screen if you're watching the YouTube video is several screenshots of where you may want to stand depending on where Mantis goes at the end here. Um, so and where you are relative. So like right now, I'm going to move a little bit to my left and start shooting him from there. But depending on where you throw the grenade at Mantis, that's gonna change where you wanna stand. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna stand right here. The books are gonna hit me, that's fine. See how I'm perfectly in line to just press up right. The chairs don't hit me and he's dead. That's Mantis very basically, but Mantis will require practice just like any other boss fight. You have to know where to stand so you can avoid getting hit by stuff, and you need to know how to adjust the SOCOM if you're using the SOCOM. If you're using the FAMAS, what I would suggest is using FPV, so you can do this, like that. Of course, if you know where to stand, you don't really need to adjust. Like right over here, just tapping SOCOM over and over again. But if you're not sure where to aim and you pick up the FAMAS, you can just spray a little bit. I don't want to hit her. I'm going to get punched, but you get the idea. Well, don't go in front of me while I'm shooting, Meryl. What are you doing? 
I'm teaching. That's what I'm doing. We only need to use the one stun during the before the fight starts. If you do mess up your grenade throw on Mantis on higher difficulties, sometimes you won't do enough damage to do the face skip and then you throw a stun. But easy is pretty forgiving with the grenade throw to initiate the face skip, so don't worry about that too much. But if if for some reason you don't do the face skip, you'll want to throw a stun once Meryl starts trying to shoot you. That's the fastest way to bring her back down. And you, you have the stun to spare, so don't worry about it. Okay, so don't pick this you'll pick this stuff up later, so you don't need to pick it up now. You, you can come back and pick it up. If you picked up the box, you could do the out-of-bounds here. But most people are probably not going to do the out-of-bounds. So we're just going to go crawl here. You could throw a stun. What I suggest is just shooting with the SOCOM out. Usually the dogs won't hit you, but... Just be aware that they might. But shooting or punching is the way to go. Since you have the gun, I would suggest using the gun. Snake, what's wrong? I thought you were good with dogs. She's gonna meme on you, just walk away. This place is mine. Meryl's I'll bullying us. Stay back, okay? But the radar is working. And since we can't use the Unlike Twin Snakes, this cutscene is completely unskippable, so we have to just wait for her to mo do her movement. If you want to joke around, you can equip your weapons like this. We're going to do the classic joke. I was able to see where the mines were it seems like they set this up in the dialogue. Wow. We're literally just going to hold up. Just hold up. Don't, don't do anything else but hold up. Okay. Have your so come out for when you're exiting the cave. Hold down, down left there, exit. Down. Um, one thing I want to mention as well with the PC version, don't start holding your direction in the next room until you see that you've loaded in. If you do, if you like hold it in between load zones, sometimes Snake won't actually do the action. It's really annoying. Um, when you start running this game a lot, you'll know exactly what I mean. So, I'm going to shoot the dog. When I turn this corner, I always just start shooting wildly. So, it's just something I do because sometimes the dog is in the way. Um, what happened there is I reloaded, which you don't want. You want to just keep on holding square and X that whole time when you're shooting. So to avoid stopping in place. If you want the ration, you'd pick it up now, like that. You're going to pull out your chaff. Next thing you're going to do is use your chaff. So. Well, it's not that you're actually using the chaff. We're just going to have the chaff out so we can move quickly in this room. So. We have our chaff out. The next thing we're actually going to use is a stun grenade. This is the second stun grenade that we need to use in the run, and it's the last one we actually need to use in the route. Did a little spin there. It's optional, but it's a little bit faster. Okay, this room. This room tends to give a lot of people who are starting out a lot of trouble because this is a hard movement line. If you are completely new and you're just focusing on other stuff, you can pick up those grenades if you want. Just run along this wall. Run along the wall. Run along the wall. Run along the wall. Run along the wall. Like that. It's a bit slower, but it's safe. Just follow the wall. I think you can move like this. Yeah, so you don't have to like hug that wall, but hug this wall like that. I'm just holding down. See? Very basic, but it's a bit slower. What you want to do, hold right, 
um, pay attention to the lines in the snow. And by lines in the snow, they're like if you look really closely at the snow, you'll see that each snow is actually a square. Like it's like a repeating texture. So there's lines in the snow. It's very faint, but you can make it out. Um, that's each square of the snow texture. So there's a line in the snow right here, which is the vertical texture line. Uh, it's basically like a grid. It's just that it's a very faint grid. So you're going to run along this grid line. Sometimes people are really confused when I say, look at the lines in the snow, or like, what lines? But there is a texture line. As long as you move fast here, this turret will never, ever hit you. It will never hit you. So as long as you move quickly, you won't get shot here. You don't need to throw a chaff. Then you're going to see this hill. After you get down this hill, you're going to tap right twice while going down. We are trying to get into the middle of this lane, the middle of this like snow lane in between the texture lines. You can be a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, but we're aiming for dead center. Um, if you're too far to the left, you're going to get blown up by claymores. If you're too far to the right, you're going to get blown up by claymores. So that's why we want to be careful. Just tap twice. So one, two, like that. That's perfect. That is perfect. Again, you could be that. That should be fine. See, I'm like one pixel off to the left. One, two, this should be fine as well. See, so there is a little bit of a range to it. But if you're too far to the right or left, you will get blown up by a claymore and look like a fool. So it's tricky, certainly. Next thing we're going to do is use a stun grenade. So get your stun grenades out. And you press down or up twice to go to B2. We need the rifle. So what you're going to do here is approach this guard and throw him. And then you're going to throw the guard by the armory door as well. And you're going to throw a stun as you enter the room. As you enter the room, as the door is opening, you're going to throw a stun. So it's going to look a little something like this. Throw. This guy, you want him to see you. Throw the stun. Pick up both ammo packages. Ideally, you don't get shot or get caught on the barrels. You, your movement needs to be good here. Um or else you're going to get shot or get caught up on stuff and that's really bad so don't do that so they open the door for you and they don't shoot you that's what you want to see interact with the elevator twice if you can or once and then switch to the socom and kill this guy you don't have to do that you don't ha you could ppk him double tap twice or once Okay, that that's that's new for me. <laughs> I guess I just lied. Well, that's new for me. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I've never seen that happen, so I'm maybe it's because of the timing? Like maybe I needed to be I don't I really don't know. I don't know. Could be a PC thing because I've never seen that fail on emulator. Well, that's upsetting. Um, so really what you want to do though, um, ideally, yeah, I don't know why they heard it because on emulator, even on extreme, no one hears that. It's very strange. PC has some weird, uh, differences though. So it could just be PC because I tried this strat dozens of times on console, but Hey, this is why we do these things, right? Throw the stun. Throw the guard. Yeah, it's not worth doing it if it if it has a risk of failing. So press the elevator button twice. Kick him away. And you either want to turn away and go like that, or you can crouch and do that. Once the timer has hit 
well, once the timer is gone and the radar is back, you want to either stand up from the crouch or turn back towards it. So we'll do it again. You don't want to do this area stealthily. It's slower and harder. That's some big boss stuff. We are not going for big boss strats. That's good. Very important that your movement's good. So yeah, like, turn from the right like this. Or like that. Or crouch. Stand up. I would suggest turning while standing, because that animation is really fast. So just once you see zero, turn like that, and then go upstairs. This point, we're going to equip our chaff again. Go along the left edge of this door. You don't need to, like, go to the middle of the door. Just go through the left side of the door. You're already in the middle of the lane, so just hold up. Just hold up. You don't need to do anything weird. Once you see that little snow drift, throw a chaff. You'll have them to spare. Don't worry. At this point, we can actually go into god mode exploit, but you really don't need to here. Just know the line. If you don't know the line, you certainly can do god mode exploit, but it's better to throw the chaff. So there is a faster strat. There's actually two different strats that are faster than this. One that involves using a stun and going to the left. Um, that's something Pazo made that if you know how to do it, it actually is slightly faster than this right side strat. And then there's an even faster left side strat. Um, but I don't recommend anyone learning the game to start with. It's what I do, and it's pretty tricky. So don't worry about that. Instead, you want to go right side. This is very simple. Camera's not going to spot you here. Just don't go, just don't go like past this. There's like a line I ran to the right of. Just be on the right side of that line in the floor, this line in the floor, and then you, the camera won't spot you. After you throw the guard, throw the chaff. Don't delay. I delayed a little bit. It's okay, but don't delay too much. We're trying to get to the elevator before this guard does. So you see he's, he's now turning and moving towards the elevator. You have plenty of time. Just don't dilly-dally. I'll do it one more time. So we're going to go over to the right. Again, flicker. Don't ever hold upright if if it's not part of a strat. This position works. The camera's not going to see us. Throw the guard. Throw the chaff. This is not the fastest strat, and there is a faster save strat, but this is what you should do on your return trips to the nuke building. The reason we don't do this on the first go is because of the codec call that happens. It delays us and it changes the guard cycle, so that's why we don't do it the first time. Okay, so at this point we're going to go out of bounds. Um, I'm going to do a very brief explanation of god mode exploit since we're almost done with part one. So god mode exploit is... A trick that exploits how the rifle works in this game when you go into the rifle aim right here when he's going prone he's actually invincible he has iframes that's part of the design of the game so like if wolf sh shoots you right here or anyone tries to hurt you you don't get damaged once you get in the scope you're actually vulnerable but because of how because of how weapon hotkeys in this game are really poorly implemented, we can interrupt that animation like this, and now we are invincible. So the only forms of damage that could kill us are if we get poisoned, if we drown, if we fall into the blast furnace, if we fall into a pit, stuff like that will kill us still, like insta-kill stuff or suffocation or drowning, that kind of thing. So. God Mode Exploit doesn't save you from that, but bullets, explosions, punches, anything like that, typical forms of damage, you won't take it. So we are going to be exploiting the heck out of that um, during this run, but not as much as you'd think, uh, because for Wolf, unless you do Weapon Glitch, uh, we're going to be sniping her, and when you're in the scope, 
This resets you to what we call state zero. Uh, this is like the neutral state. When you go into the scope, you're in state zero. If you just tap 09 or 03, 01, it doesn't matter what weapon you use. As long as you have it, of course. This all initiates god mode. The reason why we always say 09 is because 09 are right next to each other. And you will pretty much always have chaff, so this is very easy to do. I use my middle finger and index finger and just quickly... You can hear it. Um, if you end the god mode exploit in a crouch, well, this is GME1, by the way. This is what we call GME1. If you end the state in a crouch, like this, or you do it like that, um, you'll be in what we call GME2. And this has trigger breaking properties, so you see, like, the camera's not following me. If I go prone, the camera will reset. Um, you gotta be careful about that, because you could potentially crash the game if you go prone at a bad time. Um, if the camera has no idea how to follow you out of bounds. But, basic the basic premise of going out of bounds in basically every room in the game, with some exceptions, is you open the door, you GME while crouched, and now you're out of bounds. And then you can run around out of bounds. Um, every area has a, an extent to it. And what I mean by that is if you go right, 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 you will eventually go over to the left side. It is a, uh, there is a boundary, and if you cross that boundary, you will end up on the left, you know, you'll go on the other side. So all the way up, you'll go down, all the way left, you'll go right, and so on. So we're gonna be exploiting that to save movement because no one wants to have to do extra movement, right? We want to get to where we need to go as quickly as possible. So every room where we go out of bounds, it's because it's faster. If we don't go out of bounds in that room, it's because it's slower. <laughs> Simple enough, right? So that's the basic concept of God Mode Exploit and its usefulness. A uh, couple of things to note as well. If you do God Mode Exploit, you won't be able to interact with like ladders or elevator panels or what have you unless you go and press triangle or FPV and then you'll be able to interact with it. Also when you enter god mode exploit, I'm holding L2, I can't menu until I press triangle and then I can menu. It's just a weird, a very weird quirk of god mode exploit. It causes you not to be able to menu. And of course, you can still weapon menu with your hotkeys, but you can open up the weapon menus uh, like you would on console without pressing FPV. So be aware of that. And if you want the camera to follow you, like if you don't know where you're going, obviously with radar on, that helps a lot. But some rooms do not have radar. You go prone and the camera will reset to your position. So that's the basic concept of god mode exploit um once you get once you understand how it works and how to avoid the pitfalls of it it's very easy and it will simplify certain rooms in the game where it matters the most is the towers as far as all bosses console to all bosses pc goes the towers are very different on pc much easier because we're about to go out of bounds i switch to keyboard here so Turn down, go crouch, and I like feather down right constantly. There is a step count method that uh, Video Game Roulette did and made. Uh, I don't do that. I use audio cues of the wolves howling to know when to go down right. And then you like go prone at a certain point. Um, that takes practice. So just letting you know that right now. There, I have a video on my... YouTube showing how that works, but there's also the VGR step count method. I don't know the steps off the top of my head, but you can find that on our wiki. Okay, so Wolf 1. Um, the really big problem with Wolf on the PC version is since we don't have analog, um, we have to hold the direction to get the faster movement with the rifle, which really sucks. It really sucks. So Wolf is kind of bad on PC. 
So just warning you right now, um, this fight is very practice heavy because you need to know where to aim, where she drops, how she can move, etc. So that's something to know ahead of time. If you are really, really bad at sniping, like you just hate sniping on this version, um, what you can do is do weapon glitch. I'll show that right now. So you crawl into the, the barrier, tap your weapon key, and I don't think you need to actually open up the weapon menu, but we'll see. I just actually used um, my hotkey. You take damage, crawl into the barrier, crawl into the barrier, press L1 to unequip, re-equip your item. And after that, you um, press the triangle button to go into FPV, mash a bunch of buttons, and then when Snake stands up, you switch to the rifle. Do not go against a wall here. If you do that, you will be stuck and you will be sad because you saw flock. So don't do that. Especially when you're going up this, this staircase, hold down up left and just start punching her. We want her to stay up here if possible, but we really don't have control over what she does. You can't attack her while she's prone like this. You just keep on punching her. So this is actually like, that was actually really good luck, honestly, for, for this. So if you absolutely despise sniping, you're like, I hate it, I don't want to do it, I just want to use stingers for Wolf 2, that sort of thing, you're just like, I do not want to learn this fight, do weapon glitch. The RNG is uh, could be worse, like you're generally going to have a slower fight than if you did um, if you did the fight appropriately, especially because you do a bunch of movement down this, this hallway that we do not do on PC. So something to be aware of and you can't go out of bounds because I, I don't think you can leave the room once you enter. So we don't really get that option, unfortunately, to like warp around this point. Yeah, see? So, it's a bit slower, but hey, you know, sometimes if you don't like something, you avoid it. <laughs> and if you do that, then you don't really need to pick up the ammo earlier, and then that'll change how you throw the stun in the armory, but that's just something to mention. Instead, equip your rifle immediately. If you ever get shot, reset your aim. Whatever good shot, reset your aim. Your aim will get shaky after a few seconds, so it, generally speaking, especially on PC, because your movement on the scope is slower, like, you're probably going to want to reset your aim once you start aiming around Wolf, unless you're being really risky and just going for shots. If she starts hiding behind the pillar, you can go pick up ammo right here, and then come back to the bottom, because we're going to go out of bounds right after this fight ends. On console, you stay up top, but we can go out of bounds, so we go back to the bottom, like this. And just keep on tapping, wait until she pops out. You don't have to literally hit Wolf. There's like a bit of a bubble around her. Um, you will learn this as you practice this fight, that it's not like a per it's not like you have to hit her to actually hit her. Um. If she ever goes prone on the right side, you can hit her while she stands up. Maybe I can show that. Again, this fight is completely random. You have no control of where she spawns and her movement, really. So that's the place where you'd want her to go prone. Um, be aware that she does the same amount of damage on every difficulty. She hits really, really hard. Um, so you might want to have your rations out. Is Wolf less aggressive on PC? Um, I think Wolf is a little bit less aggressive on PC compared to digital console versions, but the problem is is that since your aim is worse, like your aim is slower, then it sort of doesn't make a difference in a way. Okay, if she goes prone here when she stands up, like right then, you want to shoot her while she stands up, and you can use that to Keep her in a loop. You can also do that when she's standing at that pillar as well. 
So equip your chaff. And you're going to go out of bounds over here. Oops. Make sure you have your cart equipped. Don't forget that. Then hold down right. Do not go prone while he's falling. Wait until you... You'll see, like, this, um... That, like, weird... The camera, like, falling. Do not go prone there. Because if you go prone there... Um... The game will crash. Like, it will just close. So, wait until you see that the camera is fully dropped. And then go prone. Though, I think... I don't know if you... Well, yeah, you actually have to go prone because I don't think the uh, trigger is going to work. We'll give it a go. I don't think you can just run into it, but let's see. Again, if she's hiding and you have... You need ammo, just go pick it up. Try to aim at her... At the center of her body. Like, you don't need to go for headshots. Headshots are a thing in Twin Snakes. This is not Twin Snakes. A shot is a shot in MGS1. If you start shaking your aim, you should just double tap R1 and re equip. Don't risk it. It's very hard to aim while the aim is shaking. See, but that position you need to aim pretty much at her head. The best way to get good at this fight is just to keep on doing it over and over again. You can ra just ration as well and then re-equip your card. There we go. I'm gonna equip my chaff now. Let's see if I can just go prone after falling, so. One, two, I listen to the steps. So there you go. That's correct. So yeah, you can pause buffer as well with F3. And if you bind that with like DS4 windows, you could just bind it to start. Um, pressing F3 during a fight is pretty awkward, the function key. But you can do it. You can do it. At this point in the run, any percent in and uh, all bosses are pretty similar. So you're human after all. Except we don't wait as long in so the torture room as on any percent. You want to immediately submit. I just started explaining this because <laughs> I finished the fight, but... Wolf will be very frustrating, especially because you have to hold the pad to get the fast movement. So on PC, you really want to let, you want to hold a direction. You want to hold a direction. So up, right, right. Don't. Until you actually get to the point where she is, you do not want to let go because then you will enter back into like the slow D-pad movement. So just hold it. It takes about a second or so for the fast movement to start. So be aware of that. Once you change direction, it's going to become slow again. So the choice is yours. Do you want to deal with sniping or not? Once you get to Wolf 2, um, if you still don't want to deal with sniping, you don't have to. You just use stingers instead. But the stingers are not necessarily better. They're just more of an option. If you can get her while she's moving, it's good. But it's kind of hard on PC with the D-pad movement. So like if she goes that far over to the side then I'm probably going to reset my aim. She's being really aggressive right now. Again, I'm aiming way too high up. Do as I say, not as I do. Go back down here. See, I got my ammo. 
on very rare occasions when you shoot her while she's prone she will continue to stay prone so be ready for that sometimes she's not going to stand up but if she's standing up the easiest one to do is when she's over on this right side she'll go from boom boom aim around there around here you can also hit her while she's coming prone from here um it's a little bit easier if you're like over on the left side it's, the view is a little bit clearer so you could like stand you could go prone like a little bit more over here it's just that your position going into the out of bounds will be a little bit different so just be aware of that but you can hit her while she stands up over here as well just don't aim for her head aim for her body and once she's like basically st standing then you start firing but yeah, she can attack around here, 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 from the pillar on both sides, prone from the pillar, and then over here. This fight, in reality, is easier than Wolf 2 because she only has a few places where she actually attacks you from. So once you know where the op what the options are and where she can move um, and how to shoot her while she's like standing up, she takes less damage than on Wolf 2. Um, obviously on Wolf 2 you get the Stinger, which is a nice option, but she has a lot more places to hide on Wolf 2. This fight, she hides at the Girder. That's it. Wolf 2, she's got like 10 trees, and then there's a hill that she'll juke you at. It's really bad. You think Wolf 1's bad, just wait until Wolf 2. So... It just takes practice, y'all. It really just takes practice. You can become good at this fight. Just make sure that you don't go up the corridor here. You want to go backwards. And you'll skip a lot of movement. Just don't go prone. Do not go prone early. Do not go prone early. You want to hold down right. You could go in FPV too if you want. You have to go up the... Don't go into this girder. If you go in this girder, you have to, like, back out. So, you want to go up this... It looks really awkward in FPV, because you're not supposed to be over here, but you fall down, and boom. Don't move. So, that's going to be part one of this tutorial. We basically covered all the big stuff in this run. Um, there is still some all bosses specific stuff coming up. But really, like, when, you, when it comes down to it, all bosses adds... Um, it's about 30-ish minutes to the run. If you're good at the run, um, you get like a 102. And if you compare that to, say, any percent PC where the top time could be a 36. That's like 26 minutes added to the run. And most of that is up until this point. All that's left is the towers, where we go fight the hind, um, and wolf 2. Once you get to disc 2, it's the same game as any percent. If you want to learn more about Metal Gear Solid Speedrunning or other games in the series, visit MetalGearSpeedrunners.com.